I don't like to push products on anyone, and I thought by not disclosing the brands that I was using and simply describing the type of product, that somehow that would be more helpful. I tried to use brands and products that are readily available across the world that any brand would pretty much carry and from different budget points as well. Products that you likely already own so that you can recreate the looks then and there without needing to go out and purchase anything. However, I have now realized that that isn't the most helpful, that you want to know what brands I use and what brands I would recommend. So this week I'm putting together a list of my favorites. And I would also love to hear what your recommendations are too so that we can help each other find products products that work for us. So I'd really love your help on that part. If you see a brand that's unavailable in your country that I'm talking about here, I would love if you would suggest a brand that is more readily available where you are. So please let me know what country you're from and what brand you like to use and I will add them to the list. And I'm really excited to hear your suggestions and thank you ahead of time for your help on that. Now with all that said, let's get started. As with all the tutorials that we do, we always start by prepping the lid. Now this can be done in a few different ways with a few different type of products, depending on your skin type and the look that you're creating. Now there's a few reasons that we prep the lid. Firstly, it gives the eyeshadow something to hold on to. The skin on the lid is always moving from blinking to smiling, even sneezing. And also prepping the lid creates a barrier between the skin and the makeup, especially important for people with oily lids the oils from the skin can actually break down the makeup. And prepping the skin creates a blank canvas for the eyeshadows to show up on. A tinted primer can actually create an even tone so that your eyeshadows can display their true color. So here are a few products and brands that I would recommend for prepping the lid. I have used Urban Decay eyeshadow primer for years. I do prefer the tinted one over the original formula. The original formula dries clear, however I found that it was just a little bit too liquidy in comparison to Eden. I do wish they would come out with more shades though because I feel like it's a great base but I have to color match with certain people so I'll add in a touch of concealer either lightening or darkening it. On the plus side I've actually learned that I can mix and match with this particular type of primer. You see the older I get and the drier my skin gets, the less I have a need for oil control, which is what this primer does. So instead, I like to mix in a little bit of concealer and this shears it off. You can also apply it with a damp sponge because that helps too. But that way it's not as heavy, it doesn't weigh down the lid. And this mix and match technique can be used for most liquid eyeshadow primer. For instance, the Wet n Wild one. This is a drugstore alternative to the Urban Decay one. If you find that liquid eyeshadows are very heavy, they weigh down your lid, or they cause your eyelid to shrivel up like a little raisin, try mixing it with a very lightweight concealer to shear it out. The best lightweight concealer, in my opinion, is the L'Oreal True Match. It is hydrating, it's medium to full coverage, it blends easily across the skin. Now, it's not the only concealer that I love, but it is my favorite one, but I'll discuss more concealers in a future video. Also, pairing the primer with a concealer means that you can adjust it depending on what you need, or maybe how dry your eyelids are on that day. For instance, if I'm doing a basic smoky eye, I will do a 50-50 mix, but if I'm using a lot of glitter, then I might do a 60-40 mix because the glitter needs something a little bit stronger to hold on to. Or then you can adjust it for the weather, whether or not I'm wearing my glasses because that traps heat behind it, meaning the eyeshadows are more likely to smudge and melt, so therefore I'll have to use a higher concentration. Or maybe you're just hormonal and you're going through some hot flushes, or maybe you have watery eyes. You can just adjust it depending on what you need. Now another alternative for dry lids is to use a mattifying concealer, and I'm sorry to my oily lid friends, you do need to use a primer. But I will ask my oily skin friends to do me a little favor. I'm not an expert on matte concealers because I rarely use them. I've got dry skin. But if you could just recommend a oily skin safe concealer that maybe people with dry skin can use as a primer, I would really appreciate it. Concealers are great for just basic looks. They're not going to last that long. They're not going to create a barrier, but they're great in kind of a hurry or like a day-to-day -day quick base. I would not recommend using the L'Oreal True Match alone though because it's far too hydrating and your eyeshadows are going to slip inside even if you have dry skin like me. 
Well, at least that's what I found. Now, if you hate liquid primers, you find maybe they separate or maybe they just don't really work for you. Try using a stick primer or a potted primer. For example, MAC Paint Pots. And you can use this primer as a base or an eyeshadow itself. If you're using it as a base, make sure that it's matte and make sure that it works with your skin tone. So Soft Ochre is a classic. It works with the warmer skin tones. It's quite similar to Eden by Urban Decay. Painterly is what I use in the winter when my skin is a little bit more on the cool neutral side. It's Laying Low is a peachy beige. Contempt... I can't... Every time I try and say this, I say it wrong. This particular one is a warmer, deeper version of Soft Ochre. And then you have It's Fabstract, which is a neutral medium brown. So those are just a few of my go-tos. Now, if you're using any of these for cream eyeshadows, which some of them have like iridescent finishes, a shimmery base, if you're using it as a cream eyeshadow, make sure you still prep the rest of your lid because you're likely only going to apply them as a cream eyeshadow in certain areas, so don't neglect the rest of the lid. NYX Jumbo Eye Pencils were also a great alternative to MAC Paint Pots back in the day. They're also great if you're not a big fan of jars, though NYX do have one in a jar, which is pretty good. Now we're veering into eyeshadow territory, but using a cream eyeshadow with a shimmer or a color is a great base for the rest of your eyeshadows. So you can invest in the good bases and then just use kind of cheaper eyeshadows over the top. Now there's also a thing called mixing mediums, like the Illamasqua Sealing Gel or the Inglot Dura Line. What you basically do with this is mix them with powders to create a creamy texture that then sets like a powder, but really long lasting. So that's just an alternative way to make sure that your eyeshadows are working for you. So there's so many different ways that you can prep the lid. There's so many ways to make your eyeshadows work best for you. But if you have any suggestions on eyeshadow primers that you like, or if there's one that you really don't like, definitely let me know and I will add it to the list. And in our next video, we're going to be talking about eyeshadows. So if you have any questions ahead of time, let me know. But check back tomorrow for that one. And as always, my friends, be kind to yourself. Be kind to others, and I will see you tomorrow. Hopefully. Bye. You look very professional. It's the blazer. <laughs> Does it look like I'm wearing a blazer, though? Yeah. I don't want it to look like I'm wearing a blazer, though.